This episode brought to you by Van Helsing's Creature Codex, Monster of the Week's official, unofficial bestiary. My name is Michael. I've been absolutely fascinated by tabletop role-playing games for the better part of my life, and... Whoa, 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 what, what is that? <sighs> Welcome to Roll With Me. Each playbook in the game of Monster of the Week brings its own flair, adding color and texture to the proverbial lanyard of our campaign. Champions, angels, wizards, and detectives all in one world, each a master of their craft. Except, of course, for the spooky. Come and play with us, Daddy. You can do things normal people can't, but there's a price and the bill's gonna come due soon. The Spooky is a regular person just like you or me or the 12-year-old that shovels your grandma's driveway. If that person was plagued by strange and sinister powers beyond their control, and the inherent instability of this playbook brings a whole new level to the party dynamic. Let's get into it. First of all, the Spooky relies heavily on the weird stats, so much so that all of the available stat blocks start you with a plus two in weird. The move Moves are really cool. Uh, some, like Premonitions and the Big Whammy, mirror playbooks like uh, The Chosen or The Initiate. Others are very unique and really neat. For instance, the Hex move gives you extra effects for your use magic rolls. Effects like making your target contract a disease or break something precious or valuable. Like putting a literal hex on someone. Eat your heart out, 5e warlock. Monster of the week is not D&D. Or telepathy, which lets you read a bad situation, investigate a mystery, or manipulate someone without even docking. We are given a lot of options for how to build our spooky. Though not made for combat, the spooky can fill pretty much any other role in the party. It sort of acts as the intellectual foil to the monstrous as far as aesthetic and balance goes. But it's not all sunshine and unicorns for the spooky. These powers of theirs are dark, mysterious, and probably evil, and they definitely come at a price. Every spooky has a dark side. Three tags from a list of character traits, ranging from depression, self-destructive tendencies, and poor impulse control, I know, too real, to hallucinations, rage, and literal soullessness. Keepers, this is where we step in. At any point, we can use the hunter's dark side tags to make them do something bad, something outside of the interests of the party, maybe something directly against the interests of the party. The more luck the spooky has used in the campaign, the nastier these interventions become. On the plus side, if the hunter does what they're told, they mark experience. And if they don't, they lose their powers until the end of the mystery. Or until they cave. Now this is a super useful trick to keep in our back pockets. It can be a wrench in an otherwise perfect plan, a plot hook for a mystery, or a fitting punishment for dice goblins who always roll too high and get away with everything. Oh, nice rolls, Josh. Now go try to smother your mundane in their sleep. One thing that should be noted about about this concept and others like it in Monster of the Week is that they should be used tastefully, not sparingly, not heavily, tastefully. The big hiccups should pop up maybe once per mystery and definitely not once per session. Leaving enough breathing room between keeper interventions will keep each time feeling fresh, like a surprise, like a big spooky dump in an unassuming brown paper bag. And with that, I hope you all found this one helpful. Roll to help out the channel by liking this video, commenting, and subscribing if you haven't, because every little bit helps me make more content for super cool people like you. And stick around because I'm going to tell you about a super cool Monster of the Week resource that you're going to want for your campaign. From the twisted mind behind Weird Web and Tales from 2000 comes an all-new best-selling bestiary for Monster of the Week, steeped in lore and packed with narrative opportunities. Van Helsing's Creature Codex features 16 new monsters, beautiful artwork, and a super cool, handwritten, antique aesthetic that makes it a perfect in-world resource for your campaign. Check it out on DriveThruRPG and see for yourself why Van Helsing's Creature Codex is the hottest new Monster of the Week supplement on the web. Also, if you're in need of some fun, nerdy swag to make your friends around the gaming table jealous, head to WingateTheBrand.com and check out a bunch of stuff I designed, like this line of tarot-inspired tees for the playbooks of Monster of the Week, or this gnarly Eldritch Nightmare hoodie, or this vintage Squatch Hunt tee. Every purchase goes directly to making more and better content for my amazing viewers. And if you feel so inclined, head to my Patreon at Patreon.com slash Michael Wingate and follow me on my zany musical adventures with some really cool people in some really cool spots.